Okay, hi there, welcome to an applied micro video. There is a growing controversy over shortages of COVID-19 tests across the UK. The government is likely to have to ration tests in the weeks and months ahead. And the scarcity of those tests, uh, particularly as demand rises, is having real consequences. For example, with staff shortages impacting on schools and uh, causing some hospitals to delay surgeries and other treatments uh, which uh, were delayed themselves by COVID during the lockdown. So testing is considered critical to containing the COVID-19 virus, yet many countries, not just the UK, have experienced uh, shortages of diagnostic supplies, COVID tests. And uh, in the UK, as we know at the moment, many people with symptoms have been unable to get uh, a slot for a test will have to travel hundreds of miles to do so. So this issue, uh, the scarcity of COVID testing, uh, it raises important issues of efficiency and equity in the testing process and reminds us, particularly those of you who are starting your study of economics, of the sheer inevitability of scarcity and perhaps some form of rationing during the public health crisis. I'll, I'll link to this uh, news video from Sky, which is particularly useful. It's a very short but good news video in the comments section of our own uh, of our own video. So, what do we mean by scarcity? Well, scarcity in economics refers to resources being finite, being limited, but finite and limited relative to demand for their use. So, scarcity in economics is a relative concept. It's the supply of something relative to demand. One of the aspects of uh, COVID tests, which is worth mentioning, is that a test, uh, and I've had one, many of you will have already had one, is a rival good. Now, a rival good uh, may only be consumed by a single user. And the consumption of a rival good, if I have a test, for example, uh, that means there's one less test available for other people. Uh, rival goods use up scarce resources and there is therefore an opportunity cost. If I take a test, uh, that reduces the amount available for somebody else. Now, the number of tests being completed uh, in the UK per day has grown substantially. This chart provides the evidence and this is a reflection in part of demand, which of course itself is a function of... Of need. So there are many, many more tests being completed. As you can see, there was a step change at the end of April and there's been a, a pretty substantial increase in the testing, number of tests completed. Uh, what I've done here is add on the number of uh, tests, the, the estimated planned capacity of the testing system in the UK. And there seems to be plenty of spare capacity measured by the number of tests that can be completed each day. So you might ask the question, well, why is there a shortage of testing slots? Why are people having to wait days or travel hundreds of miles to get a test that takes just, you know, just a few, a few seconds or a few minutes? Well, I think the answer is that the testing shortage appears to have been caused by a lack of capacity in the laboratories where the COVID tests uh, are processed. And that shortage of testing, of course, is having real consequences. Workers are having to self-isolate rather than work because the tests are not available for either them or, or their family members. And that's taking workers away from schools and away from uh, the front line of the NHS and also in, in, in care homes, for example. So what factors limit the supply of tests? Well, the key point is that tests require scarce resources. The sample collection process requires scarce resources. You need to employ people, you need to find, obviously mobile testing sites can be set up, uh, but that requires resources to be brought to bear. Test execution requires scarce resources. And crucially, as we've just mentioned, you need laboratory capacity to process the tests. And that, that capacity takes time to grow. And even after tests have been processed, the data management systems, the record taking, the publication of results, informing people of their results, informing organisations of their results also uses up resources. So whilst one individual test involves relatively small amounts of resources, the process 
itself is significant. In fact, so ex ex executing the test, uh, I'm, I'm told, requires perhaps something like 20 different reagents or, or consumables or other pieces of equipment. So as a result, in a situation where demand outstrips supply and where the price mechanism doesn't function, you know, test prices are not going up because of scarcity, uh, some form or system of rationing is needed. So what do we mean by rationing? Well, to ration means allowing each person to have only access to a fixed or limited amount of a commodity or access to, in this case, a service, the testing service. Rationing is a way of trying to prioritise access and also, crucially, helping to rebalance demand and supply. And it's often a short-term palliative to a, a bigger problem. Now, this, there are several options available if you want to ration test supplies. So rationing isn't just putting down a fixed limit, saying you, know, you, should, you, you can only have one test every six months, for example. There are lots of options. Here are, here are five different, what, six different ways of rationing. One is you allocate on first come, first served. People are willing, you know, people are willing and able to uh, get, people who get in first, muscle their way in, uh, perhaps to, to get a slot on, on the booking system. So you could allocate on first come, first served. Often that is not the preferred choice of rationing. Clearly, it's not very efficient to do that. Uh, it, it must be the case, surely, that organisations, in this case the government, have to allocate based on some assessment, some other criteria. And the obvious one will be to say, right, you assess on the basis of clinical need. In other words, you only get a test if you are showing symptoms of COVID or you prioritise, as I think the government will have to do, certain groups. In other words, people working in the NHS, people working in care homes, other frontline workers, they they have prioritised access uh, to the testing capacity. You could randomise the whole process, which would be interesting. You could, you could have a kind of COVID test lottery. Um, I'll leave you to think about the costs and benefits of that. Uh, you could uh, base it on queuing. People's willingness, for example, to stand or stand in line at mobile test centres is a form of rationing. The other aspect you, you might move towards is to base the tests on some kind of willingness and ability to pay. And we're starting to see aspects of that. Uh, perhaps the private sector will respond by providing a range of testing services available for those willing and able to leave the kind of NHS system uh, and, and pay for the tests. In, in the summer of this year, Germany and Austria became two of the, the first countries to deploy airport testing. So uh, airlines and airports themselves providing um, swab tests. And I think they typically cost passengers... Here's the example from Vienna. I think they typically cost somewhere between 60 and 150 euros per test. And you get your results back in several hours. You, you arrive at an airport, have a test, you quarantine for several hours um, before you get your test results. So paying for testing is sometimes a way of rationing or meeting demand. And finally, over time, we hope and perhaps expect that new forms of testing will come on stream as the healthcare sector innovates, a form of what's called dynamic efficiency. So here's a good example taken from a news story in the Financial Times, early September 2020, two UK companies launching a saliva-based tests for COVID-19. Clearly, this innovation is going to be important. Uh, the efficacy of those tests, the reliability of those tests, the percentage of false, po false positives, for example, will become hugely important. So much of the economics you study at A-level can be applied to the coronavirus pandemic. And I hope that this video has provided a useful application of scarcity and rationing as two economic concepts.